pretty difficult to get this grin off my face, mainly because we're back in one of my most favorite places to visit. Now, if you're like me and is a type who enjoys to have a taste of a little bit of everything, then I'm sure you definitely enjoy it here. I'm Kevin La Pena. Join me as I take you around Japan's third largest city and second biggest economic zone, Osaka. Thousands of visitors come into Osaka on a daily basis, also because it's real easy to get to. With daily direct flights to the Kansai International Airport, Osaka will always just be a few hours away from wherever you're coming from. Although Osaka is known for being a business district, within the vicinity is one of its more popular sites that shows how Osaka still sticks to its roots. We're at the famous Osaka Castle. A representation of General Hideyoshi Toyotomi's power during the 16th century and is widely regarded as one of the symbols of Osaka. Now during its construction, the castle has been used as a stronghold for decades upon decades of war, which unfortunately resulted in the castle's structure being compromised one too many times. But now, the castle is as beautiful as ever and has since become one of Japan's most visited tourist attractions. Most tourists are familiar with the castle's main tower. What some aren't aware of is that it's just a small portion of the whole fortress. The tower is located in the middle of the castle's park, which covers a massive area occupying up to 107 hectares. And it's also worth mentioning that the whole castle is surrounded by a moat. Still within the city, we head to another beautiful part of town worth checking out. We're here at the Nakanoshima Park, a beautiful oasis amidst the bustling and life-filled city of Osaka. This is a spot where people take a break and to just take a step back and enjoy the cool weather of Japan. <laughs> Nakanoshima Park is the first public park to be built in Osaka. It officially opened in 1891 and is located between the Dojimagawa River and the Tosaborigawa River. Among the many beautiful sites in the park, is Osakashi Chuokokaido, or the Osaka Central Public Hall. The building is a popular site of the city and is even considered as one of its symbols or landmarks. The Central Public Hall is a neo-Renaissance building that was built between the year 1916 and 1918 and houses two concert halls as well as a restaurant. For those who appreciate history and architecture, this is a place worth checking out for yourself. We only have so much time in getting to see the whole of Osaka. And what better way to get a chance to see the whole of the city than to see it from above. This is the Abe no Harukas, Japan's tallest skyscraper found right in the heart of the city. Aside from it being a mall and housing different commercial establishments, people come over every day to visit its top three floors. Standing over 300 meters high, People come over to appreciate the scenic view from here. The observation deck is found in the building's top three floors, which offers a full 360 degree view of the city. If you're lucky, you might even have the chance to get private access to the helipad, located at the topmost part of the building. So far, we've gotten the chance to explore Osaka on ground as well as from above. But another way to experience the city is to see it from the water.
I'm now on the Okawa River for the Osaka Duck Tour, which is a tour that takes you around in an amphibious car and drives you straight into the river. So join me as we check out Osaka in a different way. Showtime, it's showtime. <laughs> The Osaka Duck Tour is a unique approach in going around the city. Tourists hop on a bus, which goes around Osaka, passing through notable sites such as the Uemachi Suji Avenue, with views of the Osaka Castle and the Sakura no Miya Park. You can join a public tour or rent a private jeep for a more personal trip. The whole tour takes about an hour and a half. This is the first of its kind in Japan, so it's definitely worth checking out. It'd make for a good story to tell. Fun for you, and fun for the whole family. It's been quite a day so far, and we've worked up quite an appetite. We end the day at the famous Mimiu Honten, to try their signature udon ski. Being one of the oldest family-ran restaurants in Japan, the Mimiu Honten has been in service for over 250 years. They are most recognized for their udon ski, or a hybrid of udon and sukiyaki. So, uh, Mimiu is uh, a Japanese noodle restaurant. Uh, we are proud to serve our famous traditional dish, which is called udon ski. Uh, udon noodle and a dashi hot pot style. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, some nigiwai bento, which is uh, all you can eat soba and udon. And we are proud to uh, almost uh, 90 years in Osaka, but counting our uh, ryote period, it will become almost 250 years in Osaka. They have other delectable items on their menu. The main attraction is undoubtedly the Udon Ski Do-It-Yourself Hot Pot. Okay, so we, we saved this, uh, there's a box saved for last because inside this box are live shrimp. And you can see, okay, they're not moving as much because they're, uh, they're pinned down by the, the tongs here. But then what's, what's gonna happen is we wait, we have to wait for the soup to boil and then we can put the shrimp. We've had the chance of admiring the beauty of Osaka City. Now, we take time to appreciate its more traditional side as we head over to the city of Sakai, one of Japan's largest seaports since the medieval era. We head over to the Sakai Risho no Mori to learn more about Sakai. Good morning, Nagai san. Um, would it be fine if you told us more about um, Sakai? Okay. Sakai is located in the southern part of Osaka Prefecture mm -hmm. and it's quite near from Kansai International Airport. So it's quite convenient to visit uh, our city. And Sakai is also very famous for the culture, uh, tea ceremony culture, and also the, um, producing the very high quality uh, knives, uh, which are loved by professional chefs in Japan. The Japanese tea ceremony is a ritual of preparing matcha, or Japanese green tea. More than the actual tea that's being prepared, 
the importance of the ceremony focuses on the process, where almost everything has meaning and is precise. From the gestures of the tea master to the placement of the tea utensils, and even how the guests are angled and arranged. But here, we do a more casual spin on the ritual. So usually they serve the tea bowl uh, the, uh, with the front part of the bowl facing you. Mm -hmm. And then first uh, hold the tea bowl with your right hand and put it on your left arm and turn the tea bowl clockwise two or three times. Thank you. Well, this is good. Very, very good. The city of Sakai is recognized for many things, like its heritage and culture. But one of the things Sakai is known for is its top quality production of kitchen knives. We pay a visit to the Mizuno Tanrenjo Blade Workshop, one of the premier knife manufacturers in Japan, to learn more about the art of Japanese knife making. Most high quality Japanese cutlery come from Sakai and its production is a major industry in the city. In fact, over 90% of knives used by professional chefs in Japan are created in Sakai, and its knives are one of the most sought after by chefs from all over the world. Mizuno Tanrenjo has been at it since 1872, applying ancient traditional Japanese sword making techniques passed on through centuries within the family in forging and crafting their knives. This ancient practice hasn't been forgotten, and they still make use of these techniques to this day. No surprise as to why they are highly regarded as one of the most reputable craftsmen in the world. Now on to some of the more exciting parts of Japanese culture that I enjoy. Food! We make our way to the Ganko Hirano Goyashiki for lunch, to experience an authentic Japanese kaiseki. Kaiseki is a traditional Japanese multi-course dinner, where each dish is served individually all throughout the meal. What's important to point out is that the kaiseki is also treated and considered as an execution of art. Each dish is intricately prepared to exude a balance of taste, color, texture, and appearance, carefully presented and served to bring out the seasonal theme of the meal. Now this is something I can literally sink my teeth into. I've always enjoyed Japanese cuisine, and every time I'm in Japan, I make sure to set aside time for one of these. Now, this may be one of the more pricey meals that you're going to be having in Japan, but if you're looking to treat yourself, then this is one that I definitely recommend that you spend your money on. If you're going to take my word for it, the Ganko Hira no Goyashiki is the perfect place to try it out. The restaurant was once a mansion built in the Edo period of Japan and was later refurbished into an operational restaurant. It has a beautiful garden inside, and the whole atmosphere of the place just completes the whole experience. Now, back on foot, we take another step back in time and go all the way back to the Japanese Edo period. We're at the Osaka Museum of Housing and Living. Now, this isn't your typical museum, because this is an immersive simulation of how life was back in the 1800s or the 19th century. So here, we have houses fashioned to how life was back then, and we have streets made to look like how life was back in the Edo period. What's better is, you can even enter each house to get a better look of how simple life was back then. To complete the experience, for perspective, visitors can also visit a separate part of the museum dedicated to showing the evolution of Osaka City throughout the decades. On to a more cultural side of Osaka, we head over to the Yamamoto No Theater. No is a form of theater in Japan and is one of the oldest forms of theater in the world, 
that's still practiced to this day. It's a unique display of performance, and some would even say it is somewhat an acquired appreciation. These plays are a depiction of stories that have been told since the olden times, and make use of colorful traditional Japanese costumes, masks, and other props. The fun part for visitors, if you're lucky, you may even get a chance to be part of the show. <laughs> the Yamamoto No Theater is one of the few places in the world where you can witness this kind of art. It's been in operation for over 95 years already, and by the same family who built it. Not only do you get to experience an ancient practice, but you also get to watch it in a Japanese heritage site. There is a saying that people from Osaka are happy and open-hearted, all because of the good food they eat. Once known as the nation's kitchen, we try out Osaka's Kidaure culture, which means eat until you drop. We're at the Kuruman Market, and it's pretty early in the morning. But we really made it a point to get up just for this. This is a food lover's paradise, and if you're like me who enjoys fresh seafood and sushi and sashimi, then you definitely get up at any time of the day just to get here. Also referred to as Osaka's Kitchen, the Kuruman Ichiba Market is a long stretch of different shops that sell fresh seafood, vegetables, and other delicacies you would not be able to see anywhere else. Aside from tourists, chefs and restaurant owners come here to purchase ingredients, as well as visitors who come here just to enjoy the food. So uh, we came across this hidden gem at the Kuruman Market where they serve fugu or Japanese blowfish. Now if you're not too familiar with what this is, you have to be an experienced and a licensed chef to carve and prepare this fish. Because if you aren't too experienced and you don't know how to prepare it, it could be fatal because the fish is poisonous. So you cannot just try this anywhere in the world. That's why I wanted to make it a point to try this now that we're here. So here, if you, these are the slices of uh, fugu. And this is the skin. So there's skin sashimi and uh, the meat itself. Definitely worth it. Now that we've had our fresh seafood fix, it's on to the next. We move on to a more relaxed setting this time at the Chibo Elegance Ebisubashi Restaurant. Found right in the Osaka Namba Station, this place serves authentic Kansai Okonomiyaki and Teppanyaki. The Okonomiyaki is a savory Japanese style pancake made out of a variety of ingredients. The basics of it are its batter as base, cabbage, it is usually mixed in with shrimp or octopus and drizzled with sauces and garnished with different toppings such as dried seaweed and bonito flakes. Okonomiyaki translates to how you like it. So it's really up to you what you'd want to have mixed in with your dish. As for me, pretty simple. I'll just have everything in it. As the lights start to come on, the city life that Osaka is famous for starts to pick up. This is one of the reasons why tourists enjoy coming over, and we're here to show you why. We head out to the Shinsekai area, or Osaka's New World. It's ironic because this is actually one of the old neighborhoods of the city, developed as an entertainment area in 1912. We are now at the Shinsekai area. My first time here, but definitely one of the more interesting places we've been to so far. Now it's a good mix of old and new buildings, but still very colorful and very full of life. Especially as someone who hasn't been here before and doesn't see this every day, this everything here is very awe-inspiring. Interestingly, Shinsekai was partially modeled to resemble New York's Coney Island for its southern half and Paris for its northern half which is where you would see the popular Chutenkaku Tower, 
which took inspiration from Paris's Eiffel Tower. The area is lined with many shops and restaurants, which is what draws a lot of visitors in. From its many food joints, Shinsekai is also particularly known for kushikatsu, or Japanese deep-fried skewers. And where there's food, that's where we'll be. Kushikatsu is a deep-fried dish that uses a variety of ingredients, such as seafood, meat, vegetables, and you dip it in sauce and then you eat it as is. Or with rice, if you'd like. We're now at the Shirihisa restaurant where we're gonna try out um, the kushikatsu. And this place is known for this kind of dish. Not too far from Shinsekai is perhaps the most visited and well-known area of Osaka, Dotonbori. Both locals and tourists frequently come to Dotonbori, mainly for the many shops and restaurants seen here. All of the lights, sounds, and the sheer presence of life alone is a big drawing for people to come over. You know, Dotonbori is such a beautiful place. Every part of this stretch is a feast for the eyes. Lights and color everywhere. I just wish I had more time because if I did, I'd really make sure to visit each and every shop found here. Aside from the shops, Dotonbori is very much recognized as an avenue of food with a wide variety of selections from crab to noodles to sushi as well as okonomiyaki. But one particular dish Dotonbori is known for is its takoyaki. Takoyaki is a savory Japanese-style ball made of batter, mixed with vegetables and octopus, and is coated in sauce and garnished with bonito flakes. Now this is the moment I've been waiting for since the time I've gotten here. If I were to give you one piece of advice when visiting Osaka, it's to try the takoyaki along Dotonbori. You know, you can't just find this anywhere else in the world, so just go for it. I was, oh my goodness. This is brilliant stuff. You definitely shouldn't miss this. Right next door is the Shinsaibashi Shopping Arcade, Osaka's go-to shopping center. Stretching over 600 meters long, this is every shopper's dream come true. The arcade is a covered street which starts from one end of the Dotonbori Bridge and extends across it. Osaka is widely known for its shopping, and this is a glaring example of why. Now, Shinsaibashi is a one-stop shop for everything, from luxury items to clothes to electronics, even to little souvenirs that you can take home with you. Now, even if you aren't that big of a shopper, I'm more than certain that Shinsaibashi has something for you. Osaka isn't only a big tourist attraction, but it's grown to become a home for everyone that visits. Just like family, it's people and their contagious energy. It's food and culture not only leave you with fond memories, but also nourishes the soul for all those who continue to live a never-ending travel life.